okay, Fern, we want you to go to bed at 12 and get up at six, maybe. Stephanie. Hi. How do we treat insomnia? So we do it through something called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. Well, it's a mouthful, CBTI for short. And a lot of people might confuse it with CBT that they've had for depression, anxiety, chronic pain. But in reality, it is just a bunch of sleep behavioral strategies that build up your sleep drive and keep your sleep muscles strong. We don't really have a muscle, but it's useful to think of it that way. Okay, so how might we do that? How can we change whether it's our lifestyle or what techniques and tools can we use? Obviously, I'm really keen to learn about this because it's no secret that I have struggled with sleep in varying ways over the years. And I'm so keen to try new things. I can get very stuck in a rut with how I believe I should be sleeping and what the yeah. conditions could yes. be. I'm really intrigued to know how we can look for new tools, yeah. new modalities to improve sleep. It's exactly kind of what you've said there about coping with it and looking for uh, what are the reasons here and, and, and how do we fix this. Lots of people, when they think about sleep, they look at the trigger of the problem. And if it's been longer than three months, especially, they try to change the trigger. So I'm stressed, um, it's a hormonal issue. It is because of this. There are so many, there's so many different reasons why you could have a sleep problem. And that's so interesting because actually, whenever I've talked about sleep, the majority of feedback that I get is, it's your hormones, yeah, yeah. it's this, it's that. But you're saying, okay, don't look at that. You're always gonna have your sleep affected by something. That's entirely normal and I think we need to normalized sleep problems. Your sleep is not supposed to be perfect every night. It is impossible to get eight hours of sleep every single night. But it is true that unfortunately, once problems become a bit more chronic, then it becomes a problem because it starts affecting your every day and it's hard to cope mentally, physically, it's hard to cope. And that's an issue. But the problem is, is that we're looking at the triggers, but they're always gonna be there. So what else can we do? Well, we now need to start looking at the perpetuating factors. Well, what could they be? Well, one of them is the lack of sleep education that we have means that our behaviors around sleep are slightly mm, illogical so for example it seems logical to spend more time in bed like going to bed early lying in where you can just basically passively resting more moving away from some of your activities that you feel might affect your sleep in order to make sleep come to you yes. but actually your sleep is a drive state you actually need to spend more time awake in order to build that drive state and allow your sleep to happen and actually that involves spending less time in bed which is hard for people to get their heads around right so a regular wake time and actually going to bed giving yourself permission to go to bed when you're actually sleepy not because you think you should wow okay that's a big news flash for me because i'm the sort of person who is literally panicking if i'm still out of the house and it's 10 p.m i'm like all over the shop yeah. i'm seriously having an internal panic and i'm listening to my like if i'm at dinner i'm listening to the person speak but really i'm thinking yeah. how the hell do i get out of here that's, I need so to common. Get to that's so so common and there's nothing wrong with having in general a nice consistent sleep uh, wind down routine but when you start looking at that routine and becoming quite ritualistic yeah. and obsessive about what you're doing you need to understand is that stuff actually affecting you? We'll put it this way. Do you still have the problem? If the answer is yes, are you, do, are you enjoying any of this stuff that you have to do in order to get a good night's sleep? Probably not. Well, then liberate yourself because they're probably not helping. In fact, they're probably making it worse. Yes. The best thing for you to do is to ignore the bad night or the few bad nights. Enjoy your day, focus on your day, focus on exercise, focus on light exposure in the mornings, really important and then build up that lovely strong sleep drive by keeping your behaviors consistent. But what most people do is they have a bad night and then they change everything on a regular basis according to what they think works versus what isn't working. And so it doesn't even matter if you're doing the wrong behaviors because you're so inconsistent about everything you're doing that your brain just is so confused. It makes yeah. sense that your body's like, well, I don't know when you want me to put you to sleep or keep you awake. Whereas if you're super consistent, even just starting with that wake time, put a wake time in your phone, get up at that time for two weeks every day, go and do some exercise, get yourself outside in the light. And I promise you that alone, no matter how bad an insomniac you are, will have some mental and physiological effects on you. And then you can work from there. But it's about consistency, which we're not very good at. As no, humans. we're not. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at getting up at the same time every day. I'm a morning person. Good. I set an alarm. 
I'll meditate first thing or I'll work on a project that I'm excited about. I really like that mm, first mm. bit of the morning. Yeah. I don't necessarily always do the light exposure, so I'm definitely yeah, yeah. going to get myself outside yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of that lovely sunshine when it when it shows. But how how do we change the, the nighttime behaviour? How do we build up that sleep drive? I don't know enough about this. Yeah, no. So the way that you're talking sounds like you have very good healthy sleep behaviours in general. But if we're looking at right now you having a sleep disorder, insomnia, then we've got to take it to a whole new level. So yeah. we need to be more strict about the get up time. So what I mean is, even when you've had the worst night of your life and you go to bed at five, you still need to be up. If your wake time is at six, at six. Even if you didn't sleep at all, you've still got to get that body up and do those things. And then we take it a bit further with an insomniac and we will look at actually restricting down their bedtime. So for example, we might do a sleep diary on you and see that over a week, actually your average bed opportunity, so the amount of time you spend in bed, is eight or nine or 10 hours. And actually, when we look at your sleep, it's only five or six. So there's a discrepancy there. So we've got to actually reduce down how much time you're spending in bed, but very specifically. So we might say to you, okay, Fern, we want you to go to bed at 12 and get up at six, maybe, but not for a, sh not for a long period of time, just so that your brain can understand, oh, Oh, this is my only time. So you start to build up a strong sleep drive that's the same every day. It's no point if you use a different six hours every night. Yeah. It's got to be the same amount of hours and it needs to be the same time. And of course, for the first few days, your body's not gonna like what you're doing because it's gonna go, hang on, Fern, you've been doing something different for many, many years. I don't trust you, I don't trust this. And that's where consistency comes in to teach your brain that this habit is real and it's sticking around. Then when you start noticing, oh my God, the amount of times I wake up in the night, something's happening, I'm, the, the gaps are filling in. Then you're gonna to start to feel more sleepy during the day and that's when we start creeping out the bed opportunity. And before you know it, you're back at eight or nine hours in bed, but this time you're sleeping for them. Mm, but nobody, nobody does it that way, because it's hard. that's hard to do on your own. Well, it is, and I think what we're all bad at, no matter whether the subject is sleep or something else, mm. that first week of change is uncomfortable oh and gosh. we're not good at going, I'm not seeing results, and I'm just going to give up yeah. rather than I'm not seeing results, but I'm going to sit it out. I'm going to do the full yeah. seven days to really get those new neural pathways built so I can then change behavior. Absolutely. But also you've got the rest of society saying, well, that's weird. We weren't taught that. I don't know what you're doing, but I don't think it's right. You should go to bed. You look tired. You look like you need more rest. So you've got actually society against you and it can be quite an isolating and lonely experience, especially with lots of people going, I don't know what's wrong with you. I just hit the pillow and I'm gone. That's a horrible place to be. Ooh. Now I'm asking you to do these behaviors that are slightly different again. It's a bit like weight loss or muscle training. We all know that it's gotta be something sustainable and consistent. There is nothing that you could do over one night that's suddenly going to no. make your sleep better. But I understand that the problem with it, that not being the case is that we want something very reactive. So we want a pill, we want something. Oh, I just need to take this oil and then I'll sleep better. And then often people will say to me, well, um, sometimes it works. And I'm like, that's not how it works. When it worked, you probably had a better sleep drive that day and there were other factors at play and that's probably why you have this idea that it sometimes works. But if it's not working all the time, if you still have the problem, they are not working. We are starting to, you can start to see it emerging. You know, sleep education is becoming a thing. Back in the day when the philosophers were wondering why we sleep, they thought it was a mini death. So it was never really documented properly. It was never really researched like other areas of medicine. So it's fairly new as well and then put on top of that the lack of education and there's not many sleep specialists out there that you can go to and even then you need to find one that's specializing in sleep of course there you know it makes sense that we're confused this is the scary thing about the sleep discussion and again whenever I've watched interviews on sleep or seen front covers of books in bookshops it's like oh my god if I if I don't fix this sleep thing that I've got if I'm not sleeping properly every night I'm gonna die early like there's all these huge you know, scary headlines but what it seems you're saying is we all have bad nights here mm. and there it's it's not a big it's deal so normal. it's yeah. so normal your sleep is going to have to realign with so many things that happen to you from now until the day that you die and that is totally normal and we have to accept and normalize the fact that sleep problems in the short term are normal and i promise you if we could do that with young children for example then they would not grow up to have sleep anxiety because sleep anxiety comes from this idea that we think something terrible is going to happen if we don't sleep well yeah so 
it is that lack of education, unfortunately, but I think we are getting there. It's just, it's going to take some time and the right dissemination of the right information. At the end of the day, everybody needs a different amount of sleep. So just to recap, to to really make sure that we are encouraging this sleep drive, we need to set a time in the morning and we need to stick to it and one that works to our lifestyle and our Absolutely. schedule. I'm imagining if you've got kids or work exactly. or what the working hours yeah. are. And then to ensure that, you know, if you do have a sleep problem and you've noticed that you're lying in bed but you're not sleeping, mm. to push your bedtime later. For now. For now. Yeah, yeah. In the short term. And then you'll notice naturally that your sleep drive will start will it, building. Will start building. Yeah, it will. Cool. Mm. It's so interesting and I'm very, very grateful to hear that incredible wisdom from you, Stephanie. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. If anything that we've chatted about today resonates or if you're dealing with sleep issues or have something to say, then please tell us in the comments below. Stephanie, thank you so much for thank today. Thank you for having me.